World War III is not going to look like World War II. We were talking about this a little bit earlier with the idea of proxy wars. Mm -hmm. Proxy wars are a tool that superpowers use to fight against each other without expending their own human lives. We've been in proxy wars since 2012. Syria, Afghanistan, I'm sorry, Syria, Yemen, uh, uh, Libya, we're all proxy wars. And those are just the major proxy wars. We're not even talking about some of the wars that you've seen in, in Thailand, in Myanmar, conflicts that have happened all across Latin America, coups in Africa. They're all smaller, less, less newsworthy proxy wars, and Americans are totally blind to it. In many ways, I would argue that we're already in the beginning phases of World War III. And World War III looks like proxy war between the world's largest economies, which those economies are starting to band together, right? World War II was defined by Axis and allies. Remember that? You had, you had Italy and Germany, Nazi Germany and Japan all working together with some other countries. And then you had the UK and the Americans and the Australians all working together with countries like Russia and China as the allied powers. We're already seeing that happen now. You're seeing it in the UN, you're seeing it with NATO. You see Russia, China, Iran, North Korea coming closer and closer together, pulling Turkey into their own sphere of influence. You see Poland, uh, Germany, the UK, the United States, Canada, all pulling together, right? And you see these, the countries, the world itself dividing along these axis and, and allied powers again. That's, to me, signs that the world is already preparing for a long-term engagement, a long-term war. The war just won't look like nuclear weapons and bombers taking over cities. It's gonna look like a, a, strong, a line of third world countries that everybody's gonna fight over. And there's gonna be, there's gonna be devastation in these third world countries that are resource-rich countries, mineral-rich countries, strategically important countries, but the, the majority of the population will stay calm because they won't feel like they're at war. World War I, World War II, you had mass panic, you had hysteria. People were terrified all the time. Children hiding under desks mm -hmm. because there was, a, there, was a war, a, there was a war going on and everybody could use that word. We've grown, governments have grown much smarter since then. They don't want people talking about war. They want people worried about nuclear weapons because that makes you support your own government. But as soon as you're at war, we learned in Vietnam, the people can turn against their government. Mm -hmm. No government wants that. Well, you know, I agree with you 100%. However, Zelensky is on the record saying America is gonna have to send their their sons and daughters over here to fight and die alongside with us. And there's been rumors, and I'm sure they're just rumors. Um, I don't think there's any validity to them uh, yet. But talking about a draft, do you, you know, this could escalate. And we are talking about all mm -hmm. these different, I mean, look at Afghanistan. China was there to negotiate with Taliban before we were even pulled out. And um, I believe that was all over lithium. Mm. You know, but what's to say that we don't send our own guys again into these into these third world countries that are rich in materials and in and, and, and um strategic importance. Yes. Yeah. I, I, there's always a probability there's always a possibility. Always. I just think the probability is low. When we let's be frank when we talk about President Zelensky. All right. President Zelensky is a president of a third world country that is at war with Russia. Has he gone down and, and secured his place in history as a heroic president? I would say yes. But he was an actor before he was elected by a third world population mm -hmm. to become the leader of their country. And the show that he's famous for was a show where basically he was talking about Russian corruption in Ukraine. For all we know, he could still just be playing the same role that he was playing when he was an actor. Mm -hmm. He has no statesman chops. 
He has no background in understanding diplomacy or understanding politics. Over the last year, there have been at least a half a dozen instances where he has spoken out of turn and then been corrected. Do you remember when he, uh, he said that he would never negotiate with Putin? Do you remember that? I do. That was like, what, eight months ago, six months ago? And then he got a phone call from President Biden that said something along the lines of, you can't draw a red line like that. And then he changed his position, right? You saw him talk about how uh, the war would never stop until Ukraine had regained all of its territorial integrity back as far as 1999. And then he had to walk that back, right? The guy is a very good populist leader. He's very good at getting people excited and he's very good at making headlines. And that's good because that's what Ukraine needs. But he's not a statesman, right? He's, he is not an experienced uh, wartime leader in terms of actually knowing how to negotiate and, and uh, reduce conflict. That's not what he's good at. He has to constantly get redirected by the United States because we are the primary people funding his war, right? Funding his defense. So he's, got, he's constantly having to renavigate us. So four days ago, or earlier this week, he made some comment about how if China gives lethal aid to Russia, the whole world is going to war. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, yeah. right? President Obama said that chemical weapons in Syria were going to be a red line. And then Assad used chemical weapons in Syria and nothing happened, mm -hmm. right? One of the biggest blunders of the Obama administration, that was an American president committing American resources to a conflict. So what right does President Zelensky have to commit world resources to a conflict that only involves him and, his, him and Russia right now? It's just not likely. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And for me as an American watching this, it makes me very upset. It makes me very frustrated to see how Zelensky uses his public profile to continue to incite violence and continue to incite aggression. If you like this short clip, make sure you click here to see the next clip or here to see the full podcast episode.